of your grace and I can only bow down and say all oh, that you are awesome in this place mighty God you are awesome in this place oh we say you're worthy you are worthy of all praise oh to you our love oh why don't you worship him today oh such an awesome God
Jesus. Praise you, God. Hallelujah. Jesus is moving. He is moving in this place. The King of all glory is passing your way. Just reach out and touch Him. You'll never be the same. Jesus is moving. He is moving. Oh, don't you feel it? Oh, Jesus is moving. Your presence, God. We thank. 
thank you for your spirit today, Jesus. Oh, we worship you, God. We praise your name. See, on a hill of Calvary, my Savior bled for me. My Jesus set me free. And look at the wounds that give me life. Grace flowing from His side. No greater sacrifice. What He
Could we just lift our hands across the sanctuary and with a loud voice, I want you to begin to worship the Lamb because He's worthy of our worship this morning. Oh, Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. Lord, we are very aware, Lord, that you know all things. Lord, you're everywhere at once. You're all powerful. Lord, we're asking you to come in our midst right now and manifest your presence to each and every one of us, meet every need in this house as our worship becomes an incense unto you, O oh God. I pray miracles, signs, and wonders would take place in this service today. Oh God, you hear the desperate need of every heart, every heart's cry today. Lord, you know and you care. Meet with us, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. You are worthy of it all. Sing it one more time. You are worthy Thank you, of Jesus. It all. Hallelujah. For from you are all things, and to you are all things. We say you deserve the glory. Oh, you're worthy, Jesus. You are worthy of it all. You are worthy. Just remain standing for a moment. Brother Lawrence Robinson is in the hospital with some heart issues. We're going to pray for him this morning. Also, Sister Sharon McDaniel is in the hospital, needs a miracle of healing in her body. Let's pray for the minister's conference starting Monday, tomorrow in El Salvador, Monday through Friday. Ministers from three different countries will be coming in. I want you to help me pray that God would anoint us to minister to these men and women of God. Also, we'll have about 27 school of ministry students traveling this way in a couple of weeks about to start our school. Our Christian school is about to start. Could we just join in together? Do you have an unspoken request with an uplifted hand? Could we join together and pray for these needs? Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, that we can come once again into this holy sanctuary together, together with those of like precious faith. Lord, we know that your presence is in the midst of a congregation this morning. I pray, Lord, that you'd meet every need in this place. Those watching by Facebook, minister to them this morning, Lord. I pray that you would meet with us in this conference in El Salvador. Lord, touch every minister. Anoint every speaker. Oh, God, I pray that you would deliver set free, feel. You know what the need is in every individual life. Lord, for this school of ministry, I pray that you would begin, Lord, to begin to work for us, Lord, in this school. Give safety for those traveling, for the Christian school, Lord, for the public school starting, for our teachers and those in the public school system. I'm asking you, Lord, for a special anointing on their lives. Let them be a beacon, a light, a testimony of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. For those traveling on vacation today, Lord, I ask you to let the angels of God encamp around them. For Brother Robinson right now, in the name of Jesus, reach down and manifest your supernatural healing to his body. Be healed in the name of Jesus. For Sister Sharon, I cry out to you today that you would heal this body in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you and we give you praise in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. If our ushers could come to receive the morning tithe and offering. I want you to be in prayer. We have a lot of folks traveling, vacation, and I think they're getting the last moment vacation in before the school starts. Life and Purpose Group, we're going to have another softball game, so you know it was a hit if they're going to have another softball game. This Friday, August the 25th at Lindsay Park. It'll be at 7 p.m. See Brother David, Sister Michelle Boykin. Baby shower, Saturday, August 19th, 6 p.m., honoring Gus and Cameron Morales. It's a boy. Registered at Target and Bye Bye Baby. Never heard of that before. There will be a gift table provided for gifts, 
gift cards, and cash. Bake sale. The prime timers, they're going to be hosting a bake sale Sunday, August the 20th. Following the morning service, all proceeds will go towards their upcoming trip to Branson, Missouri. We're taking the seniors to Branson. October the 11th through the 14th, more information to come. And then as I mentioned, Harvest Time Christian Academy will be starting. So our parent orientation will be on Tuesday, August the 22nd at 6.30 p.m. School will begin September the 6th. And then we have a back-to-school youth rally Friday, August the 25th here at 7 p.m. at Harvest Time Church. And then wedding shower honoring Brother Travis Browning and Sister Whitney Sin Saturday, August 26th at 2 p.m. So that's a lot of announcements. The Lord is Lord's moving by His Spirit, isn't He? I'm so glad I'm a part of the last day church. It's exciting because I know that God's doing great things. I believe that we are the body of Christ that's going to usher in the rapture of the church. I believe that. I know that when I was a boy, they said, you'll never make it to 10 years old. I was nine. <laughs> Jesus is coming back before you're 10. I want to tell you, that's the way we must constantly have a mindset that he could come at any moment. He could come at any moment. Jesus is coming soon. Be looking for his appearance. Brother James, can you bless the offering? This mountain can't be moved They say these chains will never break But they don't know you like we do There is power in your name We've heard that there is no way through tide will never change oh they haven't seen what you can do cause there is power in your name there's so much power in your name Boo.
praise the Lord. This time we're going to dismiss our children from age 5 to 12 to Children's Church. you to turn your Bibles to 1 Timothy, that's where I'm going to be taking my text, but also I'll be moving over to 2 Timothy. So 1 Timothy chapter 3, and then 2 Timothy chapter number 2. First Timothy chapter number three and verse number seven. Moreover, he must have a good report of them which are without, lest he fall into the reproach and the snare of the devil. And then in Second Timothy chapter two and verse twenty six, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil, who hath taken captive by him at his will. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, again, we come into this sanctuary, Lord, in desperate need to hear from heaven. I pray, Lord, for the fresh anointing, the anointing that makes preaching effective. Let it rest upon these lips of clay this morning and rest upon every ear that we can hear what the Spirit of God would say unto us. I pray, Lord, that you would do great and mighty wonders in the midst of the congregation. Lord, we're going to ask you these things in the mighty name of Jesus. Everyone said, Amen. I'm going to preach to you this morning on satanic snares. One thing that you and I must never forget as a child of God that there is a real enemy, a devil, an arch enemy of God that is ever seeking to kill, to steal, and to destroy. He hates everything about God and he hates everything about God's creation. You must never forget that. That must stay on the forefront of your mind. Do you hear me? I said you must never forget that. The moment that you and I forget that the devil is out to kill you, that's the moment that you and I become vulnerable to his attack. I'm going to tell you he is a crafty, wily foe. He uses all kind of subtile, all kinds of trickery against the child of God. I know what the Bible says that you and I are not ignorant to his devices, but oftentimes we have been. You and I need more than ever before to know the word of God, to walk in the word of God, and to be filled with the Holy Ghost to give us discernment against every attack, every setup, every stratagem against the child of God. You and I must realize 1 Peter 5 and 8 says be sober, be vigilant because your adversary the devil goeth about as a roaring lion seeking to whom he may devour. He wants to kill you. He hates you. And you and I got to get it down in our spirit today that if you and I are not ready, he is going to take you captive at his own will. This word snare, it's an interesting word. It just simply means a trap. In both of the scriptures I use this morning, Paul uses the word snare. The Greek word for snare used in both of these scriptures means a stratagem, a setup, the preparation of a noose for the neck. It refers to a well-conceived trap, something that he, he, he made up, something that he camouflaged, something that he put in your path 
to trap you, to ensnare you along life's journey. You and I have to know that he's constantly doing this in each individual life for this church corporately as a body. For every couple, he has set up a snare. It is a well-conceived trap, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm going to tell you today, I have watched as the well-known ministers, uh, those ministers that have preached and had great ministries, they fell into this mighty trap. Well-known ministers, prominent ministries fallen into adultery. Listen to me today. It is heartbreaking. It is one of the saddest things to see men and women of God who God was using in a powerful way fall into the snare of adultery or any other sin for, for, for that. We have to understand, but th- th- this is the kind of sin that you see and we're hearing constantly. I hear Christians asking this question. How could that man of God, so mightily used of the Holy Ghost, do such Horrible things. I can tell you the answer is very, very simple. Satan set up a trap, a well-conceived, a well-planned out snare, and they fell into it. Hear me today. None of us are exempt to satanic snares. You and I must be sober and vigilant. Are you with me? I'm telling you today, I have seen those talk the big talk. Paul said if any man uh, uh, overcome is overcome in a weakness or overcome in failure, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thy also get tempted. I'm telling you today, we're all susceptible to the satanic snares. He's constantly placing it before us. I don't care who you are, how holy and pure you are, how long you've walked with God, or how old or how young you are. I don't care how much you insist that you would never do that. Beware. The devil is out to trap you. Every one of us have the capacity to fall just as low as those men and women of God that fell into sin. We better be on guard, ladies and gentlemen. This is a word from the Lord this morning. I want to speak as an oracle of God. I'm here this morning as a pastor. I have a pastor's heart for people. And I'm telling you, satanic snares are constantly being placed before you in your life, on your job, when you go to work, when you go to the family reunion. I don't care where you are. Satan is no respecter of persons. He knows who you are. He knows your strengths and he knows your weaknesses. He camouflages the trap with charm and beauty. You never know when a snare is being set for you. When an animal is going through the woods, you know, a trapper, he'll set that snare and he camouflages that snare. He does not want the animal to know that it is a trap. Listen to me today. Unless you're just a fool, you're not going to walk right into a trap. That's not the way we do things. We're not that dumb. But I can tell you this. Whenever you and I do not heed the voice of God, when we do not pay attention to the signs, if we do not look at our past failures, you'll walk right back into the same snare that entrapped you before. I'm telling you today, he knows exactly what he's doing. Satan's been doing this for thousands of years. In ourselves, we are no match for the devil but thanks be unto God greater is he who is in you and I than he that is in the world and I can tell you ladies and gentlemen although we're not ignorant to the devil's devices it takes the Holy Ghost discernment to reveal and expose certain satanic snares this morning we're going to look closely at the life of David why Because he walked right into a satanic trap. Now this was a man that the Bible says was a man after God's own heart. How could this happen? I'll tell you how. Because because David, David did not heed the warning signs. It's been said, if a person cannot learn from David's terrible fall into sin, he doesn't want to learn. The devil set up David whenever he was at his peak physically, financially, and spiritually. David was not hiding in a cave, nor was he a penniless fugitive running for his life. 
He was not in the pit of discouragement or depressed or burned down with cares. He was on the top of the world. No man on earth was more blessed than David at the time. He was prosperous, greatly loved, greatly feared. David had been on the front lines fighting the good fight of faith. He was victorious in every battle and no enemy could stand before him. I'm going to tell you this man was blessed coming in and David was blessed going out. God's anointing was on his life. God's blessings was on his life. Think about it. He sat under godly priest. He sat under the Zadok priesthood. He sat under Nathan. The word was not a famine in David's life. How could this happen to David? Listen to me today. We, we, we read and we can find. He's constantly looking for ways to help others. David was generous and caring and loving. Listen, in 2 Samuel 9 and 1, and David said, Is there any left of the house of Saul that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? This is the kind of man David was. He was a godly man. He was loving, generous, caring. How could this happen? You remember, he restored Mephibosheth. Remember, David was not wallowing in luxury, nor had he become self-centered. Rather, David was abounding in generosity and overflowing with love and concern for the hurting. But I've got a stern warning for somebody in this house today. You can have a good heart. You can have a loving heart, a generous heart. You can love God with everything that is within you and still fall into a satanic snare. I want you to hear me today. I believe this is a warning from Almighty God. God dealt with me very, very strongly about this message. Listen, we are more vulnerable to pride at the peak of our blessings Prosperity oftentimes is a much bigger temptation to sin than poverty is. Watch out when the blessings are on every side. When did the greatest evangelists in, the American, in America fall? When they were at the peak of their prosperity, at the peak of their influence, at the peak of their ministry. Are you with me today? I can tell you that's whenever the, the pride enters in. That's when our guard comes down. Listen to me today. I'm telling you there are satanic snares that are constantly being set. And we must understand that we are just as susceptible as others. Harvest Time Church, watch out for satanic snares. So how did Satan set up and trap God's chosen man? How did the enemy get to David? By As we closely examine the story, we not only see that he traps, but the steps, how he traps, but the steps leading up to the trap. First of all, we must understand about David. We mistake God's blessings for God's approval. This is the first mistake. This is how you can become ensnared to the enemy. We mistake God's blessings for his approval. Well, I know that God must approve of me because look at my business. I'm prospering. Look at all the money coming in. Look at my ministry. I am being blessed coming in and going out. No, we know that God would never bless anybody that's not walking in purity and in holiness. Listen to me. You better think again because I'm going to show you a pattern in the word of God. God can and does bless those he approves of. Yet he may allow great suffering to those that he also approves of. He also blesses for a reason many who have compromised. I know that messes up biblical theology. But yes, it rains on the just and the unjust. Some of the most wealthy in the world today, the most wealthy in the world today, are not godly men and women. You say, well, how can this happen? Why would God bless them? Why would God allow these things to come their way in a positive way? I'm going to tell you, just because you're blessed doesn't mean God approves of your life. Up to this point, God has mightily blessed the United States of America, but I'm going to tell you something. Uh, America's quickly turning into Sodom and Gomorrah. Not only in the in the homosexual realm. Listen, what was the pride in the book of Ezekiel of Sodom and Gomorrah? This was the sin of thy sister Sodom. Pride, fullness of bread, idleness of time, neither did she strengthen the hand of the poor 
and the needy. God said in the book of Ezekiel, therefore I took them away as I saw good. What did God do? He rained fire and brimstone out of heaven and killed every one of them. You say, well, God took them away as he saw good. That's what the Bible says. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, uh, and Sodom and Gomorrah, yes, they were a wicked city, but God had just now given them great victory in warfare. God had just given them victory over their enemies. Look at the United States of America. We are blessed. We are the most prosperous nation in the history of the world. I know people don't like to hear this because we all want the American dream. We all want it to get better. We all want to get wealthier. We all look towards the future. Listen, I believe in revival. I believe that revival could sweep this land. But let me say this to you today. Listen, this American dream is about to turn into an American nightmare. Listen, God has a way. He deals with society. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. God doesn't change. If he dealt with the people of Israel that he loved, God loves Israel, but he allowed them to go through the pains and the torments of their enemies. The moment that you and I forget about God, God will lift his hand of protection and our enemies will come and afflict us. It happened all throughout the Old Testament. Every time Israel forgot about God every time they backslid. God allowed her enemies to afflict them. Listen, we are no better. I know just because we're Americans in the United States of America, North America, we think that we're God's pick and we think that we're God's chosen. Let me tell you something. God loves every nation, every individual the same. He don't love you more. I don't believe in in that type of uh, predestination. I believe every man, God wants every man to come to repentance. Uh, God loves the Chinaman, the person from Japan, Africa, every person the same. Uh, And you and I must understand this, uh, that God has blessed America. He may have blessed you and he doesn't approve of everything you're doing. God's the only employer that'll let you keep your job a while after he's fired you. That's scary. Sodom and Gomorrah had been blessed in war and victories, and then God destroyed them. You say, well, what is the theological perspective on this? I can tell you what it is in Romans 2 and 4. Or despiseth thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. What was God doing? The goodness of God is trying to lead us to repentance. God is wooing you and saying, I love you. I know you're not doing doing right. So I'm going to send one final mercy call and that is my goodness upon your life. I'm going to bless you in so many ways. Maybe that'll convict you and maybe that'll draw you back to me. But if that doesn't work, I'm about to unleash the wrath of almighty God. Let me tell you, it is a pattern in the word of God. I've seen folks blessed with five maintenances and automatically feel they're right with God. Be careful. If your life does not line up with the Bible, you can have all the wealth in Texas and lose it overnight. Listen, I've heard the testimonies the whole time that that people were... Living in sin. They, they've told me, Brother Matt, I was living in sin and I, my business was still blessed. My family was still blessed. But then suddenly, the bottom fell out. Listen, One of the great dangers of being ensnared by the enemy is to mistake God's blessings for God's approval. A second thing that can really deceive us, Satan can ensnare us when when a deep-seated lust has not been repented and crucified. Listen, David compromised God's word by having six or seven wives. You can read it in this passage. And concubines. Why? Because society approved of it. It wasn't God's approval. You can read throughout the word of God. God's command was not, this was not, God forbid, forbade this. But society approved it. Listen, just because society approves of something and everybody's doing it, uh, listen, the majority isn't always right. As a matter of fact, most of the time they're wrong. Uh, Listen, uh, uh, we have to understand God's word, his written authentic word is going to judge us in the last day with all the extra women. Instead of 
David's lust being satisfied, you know what happened to him? It became more greedy. That's how lust is. I've seen folks that think that after they get married, maybe, just maybe, that they can get delivered from their lustful addictions. Absolutely not. That's just a quick satisfaction in that marriage. But I'm going to tell you, unless you pray through, you repent, turn from that, and crucify that old man, it's going to constantly resurface in your life over and over again. David disobeyed the word of God and became blind to what was happening to him. Had Zadok, the priest Zadok, or Nathan gone to David to correct him, reminding him about what God said about marriage, David would have probably answered like most of us, well, I know it's wrong. I know what God's word says. But I just don't believe that God's going to judge me. I don't believe he's that strict. Everybody is doing it. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. Listen, Satan knew what was in David's heart. David had a gentle personality, a warm heart for God. But he had also had a hidden lust burning deep within that soul. You can almost hear the demonic planners as they begin to scheme and set up this stratagem, this, this, this snare for David. And they said, the demonic voices, you can almost hear them as they say, look, David has a weak spot. He has a weak spot with women. He loves beautiful women. And he can't keep his eyes off of all of these women. Let's catch him in a weak moment. Let's lure him onto the royal roof and put a beautiful bathing woman in the next courtyard to tantalize him. Make sure the woman is married because if she is single, she'll just be another wife to David's Harlem. What timing in it, what was involved, how intricate the setup was. They both had to be in their places at the right moment and she had to be doing something to tantalize his lust. Satan and his satanic snares. Listen, I, I know we're dealing mainly with David's sin of sexual sin. It can apply to any sin, any temptation, any satanic trap, anything. Because the enemy, he is a wily foe, ladies and gentlemen. We have to understand that David had no idea what was going to happen to him. Right here, as he sees this woman bathing on the roof, right there, his deep-seated lust that he never truly repented of, that he never truly crucified, was activated. You know what I've learned as a young man? Not, not only do I cast down imaginations when it comes to things that I, I'm not supposed to think on, but whenever I was a young man, I first got saved, and whenever I'd see a beautiful woman, I would turn my head. I'm a, I don't even want to look her way. Amen? Not only did I cast down the imagination and didn't allow my mind to go to certain places, but I learned, even as a young man, that if you look too long with these eyes, those eyes will begin to develop an appetite for the flesh. Ladies and gentlemen, we better be careful what we're looking upon. We better be careful what we're thinking upon. We better be careful what environment we're in. I'm warning somebody in this house today, there's a satanic snare that's being set up to steal, to kill, and to destroy. You have no idea how bad it's going to be until everything is over with. The enemy is a liar. Why? This deep-seated lust was activated because it had never been dealt with. You know what I've learned? That, that, that men, when it comes to marriage, men, the greatest love language for a man, the greatest way to love a man is respect. That's the way God built men. Stay with me this morning. Amen. Going somewhere. Women, they, they want to be loved and, and gentle, 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 gentle. They're like flowers. You water the flower every day. You, you just constantly affirm them and love them and you're gentle with them. Well, God made men that we want respect and honor. And that's biblical. 
And so what will end up happening is that man won't feel honored in the house, but he'll go to the workplace and they'll honor him and they'll respect him. And all of a sudden he wants to be at work all the time and that's how the enemy sets up a snare, little by little. Or that woman, she's not getting what she needs from that man. Maybe he's not gentle. Maybe he's not understanding. Maybe all he thinks about is himself. And then she goes to work or she's in an environment where she's getting that attention that she needs. And all of a sudden she's starting to feel the way she used to feel about her husband. Uh, let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's a satanic snare. Uh, and it's going, the end of that snare is total, complete destruction and pain. Amen. Singles, whatever it is that's in your heart, the enemy, the enemy goes after that. That thing, that weakness. Listen, the snare is always hidden. Satan can ensnare us, number three, when we grow weary of the warfare. This is when we become susceptible to a satanic snare. When we become, when whenever we get weary of the battle. 2 Samuel 11 and 1, it came to pass after the year was expired at the time when the kings go forth to battle that David sent Joab and his servants with him and all Israel and they destroyed the children of Ammon and besiege Raboth. And David tarried still at Jerusalem. Listen, David was not old or faint of strength. He was just tired of the battle. I understand that we get weary in the battle, ladies and gentlemen, but you can't lay down on the battlefield. We're not home yet. You got to keep on fighting. You can't let the young people do it. You can't let somebody take your place. You better pick up your sword in one hand and a trial in the other hand. Work in the kingdom of God. Fight the good fight of faith. There is no retirement in the kingdom of God. As long as you have breath in your nostrils. You are to work. You are to labor. You are to go out and reach the lost, the dying of this world. But what did David do? He got tired of the battle. David stood before his warrior Joab and all the armies gathered out of Israel, encouraging them to go on. Be strong. Fight like good soldiers. But David was going to relax. Let up a little bit and have some Recreation. I wonder what David said to himself as he saluted the passing troops. Was David feeling guilty? How did he feel? He probably tried to justify it in his mind. I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm just going to have a little re relaxation. The intensity is really getting to me and I just can't go on like this anymore. This is exactly where many Christians are in the church of a living God. We get weary of the battle. Let somebody else do it. I've paid my dues. No, we have not. Listen, the Bible says we are debtors, debtors to the Greek and the barbarian. Listen, the, the free uh, gift of salvation. Thank God for the cross, the blood. Jesus gave it to me. Uh, listen, uh, I can't earn my salvation. I don't owe him. Uh, although I am a, a living sacrifice, I give him my whole life. Uh, but I do owe the Greek and the barbarian. What do you owe them, preacher? I owe them everything. I owe them the gospel. I owe them a life that is set apart, sanctified. Are you with me today? Uh, listen, you can't get tired of the battle when you get weary in the battle you are getting set up for a satanic snare a trap he's going to trap you get ready I'm telling you, it's out there and it's camouflaged. You never know where it is. Listen, some have just taken a vacation from a, the warfare. I'm not talking about in the human realm. There's nothing wrong with taking time off for vacations and doing nice things with your family. I'm not referring to that. I'm talking about letting down your spiritual guard. When we grow tired of walking in obedience and tired of waging spiritual war. Listen, we need to get off our vacation spiritually uh, and get back in the battlefield uh, and fight the good fight of faith and lay hold on eternal life. Listen, you are weary. And you said to yourself, I got to ease up. Or I'm just going to crack up. It'd be better to crack up. Beloved, your timing could not be worse. Spiritual relaxation or letting up is the final spring 
in the devil's snare or trap. You are choosing midnight to go on vacation. Romans 13 and 11. And that, knowing the time that it is now high time to awake out of sleep, for now is your salvation nearer than when we believed. Romans 13 and 12, the night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and in envy, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. Now let me remind you of something. Snares, to be effective, they have to be camouflaged. You have to understand this. Again, an animal that has a snare set for them is not going to willingly walk into a trap. What it is is our senses become dull. We become ignorant. We get away from the Word of God. We stop heeding the voices that warn us. We stop praying at an old-fashioned altar. Thus, our Holy Ghost discernment has become dull. Our spiritual ears are dull of hearing. Listen, in this last day, more than ever before, we need Holy Ghost discernment. I need God to speak to me because although I know the trap of the enemy, although I can see certain things, there are certain things that I cannot see unless the Holy Ghost reveals it to me. There have been times that I was about to make a decision as a pastor in this church and I would pray about it and it looked good. It looked like the right person for the job or it looked like the right situation but all of a sudden the Holy Ghost would say, no, not that. You don't know what that is. And I'd say, oh yes, Lord. There was a certain situation recently that I had to tell another staff member. I don't know why. I just know the Holy Ghost said no. I don't have to know everything. I don't know how many traps I've avoided over all the years of of serving God. I can tell you there have been times the enemy has set a satanic snare for me, but all of a sudden, uh, the Holy Ghost will move me this way. I may not have understood why, but I obeyed the voice of God. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we better heed the voice of warning. Uh, You better watch out for yourself. Uh, You better watch out for your family because you never know when a satanic snare is being set for you. Brother Matt, I'd see it. No, not always. You won't always see a satanic snare. Just look up here. Do you see any snares anywhere up here? Do you see any dangerous things on this platform? Do you see any traps that could be set? Again, snares, good snares are camouflaged. You never know. Listen to me today. There's things lurking, things lurking around us constantly that we don't even know is there. We need the Holy Ghost to show us. Are you with me today? I said, we need the Holy Ghost to show us. Some of you are in dangerous places right now. Some of you are about to walk into a snare and you say, well, Brother Matt, I'm just toying with this. I'm just playing with this. I'm just enjoying a little bit of pleasure just for a short time. God knows that I love Him with all my heart, my mind, my soul, and my strength. Let me tell you something. If you love God, the Bible says, Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. We must guard ourselves. Paul said, save yourself from this untoward generation. Save yourself. You better be looking for a trap constantly. I'm telling you, Harvest Time Church, you better be all constant aware. There's snares and traps everywhere around us. And I'm going to tell you, you can't always see them with a natural eye. You can't always see them you got to have Holy Ghost discernment. You never know because they're always camouflaged. You may be walking in an area and think everything's all right. And then all of a sudden, the trap of the enemy. You never know. Now, I made sure nobody came up here. I had somebody guarding it. 
You never know when the enemy has laid a snare for you, for your family. You never seen that, did you? You never knew that was there, did you? Why? Because it was camouflaged with beauty. It was camouflaged with something that looked nice. Uh, Satan always does that. He never shows you the end result. But I'm going to tell you, I've sat in too many rooms with too many broken families. Uh, I've talked to too many young men who have failed. Too many marriages that were destroyed. Uh, too many ministries because uh, they let their guard down a little bit. They had no idea. They were walking into a satanic snare. I'm here this morning to warn you by the help of the Holy Ghost, we must heed his voice. God wants to protect us by his spirit, but we must obey. There's a trap being set. Can someone come to the piano? There's a trap being set. And I know some of you know what I'm talking about. The Holy Ghost is dealing with folks. Surely that's not a trap that's being set for me. You better look very closely. You better have the Holy Ghost helping you to discern every place that you walk in life. Because your adversary, the devil, is constantly setting up schemes and stratagems. He's constantly, he's always setting up places for you to fall into a pit, to fall into a snare, to be trapped. And then... Thanks be unto God. If you've ever been trapped, God can restore certain things. But there are, there are times that you reach a point of return, relationships are destroyed. And, and you know, thanks be unto God that He cleanses and can forgive us. But I want to tell you, there is so, there's a certain place where you have to reap what you have sown. It is the law of God. It, whatever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. I'm warning some folks today, uh, the grass is not greener on the other side. You say, well, it looks greener because it's got a septic tank underneath it. It fertilizes the ground. It makes it look better, but it is... Sewage, it's a putrefying filth. I'm going to tell you something. Sin is never beautiful. It looks that way. Sin looks so beautiful. Oh, man, it, it looks so wonderful. It looks so exciting. It causes the heart to beat. It brings back excitement. It seems to bring back joy in the heart. It strokes you very softly on the back of the head and then puts a knife in your back. That's what sin does. That's what the devil does. I want to say to you what I said on the beginning of this message. Satan hates God and he hates all of God's creation. Let me tell you something. You better be on guard. I, since I have been married, 1996, 99, saved in 1996. Whew. Baby, December 4th, 1999, wherever she is. I have never been alone with a woman in a room, nor to counsel. If, if people leave a room and there was me and someone, boo, I'm out the door quick. Woo. You say, well, preacher, that's a little bit extreme. Yeah, it is. I love Jesus. I love ministry. I love my soul. I love my family. You afraid you're going to fall? No. I ain't going to put my place in myself in that place, nor am I going to give any room to talk. Anybody. Guard yourself. Guard yourself. Guard yourself. When you're at work, when you're at work, men, don't let that little lady that's so sweet that seems to respect you so much that makes you feel, you know, mama just got on to you because you put your dirty clothes on the floor and... You're not taking out the trash. Well, do men really take out the trash? Well, absolutely, we take out the trash. Gripe, 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 gripe. You go to work and then everything seems to be really good. I'm warning you. It's a trap. It's a trap. She's just like your wife, probably worse if you ever got with her. <laughs> worse, okay? It's a trap. It's a snare. It's a lie. Are you with me today? 
The devil's a devil. You better run from this thing. Is that little lady flirting with you, sir? You better embarrass sin before sin embarrasses you. I, I've told the story. I was, I'm a real serious guy. People are just like, when they get around me, they're like, oh man, he's a serious guy, you know. It's usually, it's not, it's not the, the bad looks that causes women not to flirt with me. It's the real seriousness. <laughs> but I remember I was, I was a young man at Frito-Lay. I'd just been married probably three or four years and and I walked in, and this lady said, well, hello, Frito-Lay. I knew what that meant. I knew what that meant. I could have said, well, hello, ma'am. You know what I did? I recognized that thing, and I, I, I immediately went to her, and I said, can I ask you a question? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? And she went... You don't give any room or place to the devil. What about it whenever that man comes up to you, ma'am, and he makes you feel so loved and so he's got a listening ear, and 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 he makes you feel the way your husband did whenever you were dating. He only wants something. I promise. I promise. You have no idea the pain that's about to take place in your life. The lives that are wrecked. What you're about to go through cannot even begin to be comprehended in the human mind. The regret, the pain, the remorse, the could have, should have, would have, if I could just go back, thoughts constantly, but you can't go back. Do not. Do not succumb to these satanic snares. Run. Well, Brother Matt, I don't know if it's a snare. If it looks like a snare, get away from it. If it looks like a trap, get away from it. If the Holy Ghost puts something in your spirit, you better respond very, very quickly. I want to tell you something. One person that I will not trust on this planet is Matt Gregory. And I know what you're thinking right now. Preacher, if you can't trust yourself, how are we supposed to trust you? I put no confidence in the flesh. I trust one person that is the Christ man within me. Listen, any time that I begin to talk about how I can and how I'm qualified and I'm equipped, to, listen, that's a dangerous place to be in. I can't do anything without holding the hand of the Lord Jesus Christ. He is my everything. And we must be so dependent upon Him that we say, Lord, oh my God, help us to see and discern. Can we stand? Help us to see and discern every snare, every satanic trap of the enemy, whether it is a sexual thing. It never starts off, I want to just bear down on this just for a minute, never starts off as a sexual thing. It starts off as an emotional thing, as a practical thing. Run for your life. Run for your life. The pain is great. The repercussions cannot be calculated. Whether it's in that realm of snares or some type of other snare, any other category, the devil's a devil. Gold, the gold, the glory, and the gals has always been the undoing of mankind. The gold, the money, the glory, the prestige, the pride, the, the recognition, and the opposite sex has always been the destruction of mankind. He's setting a snare for you. He's setting a snare for me. Let us, let us not be ignorant to the devil's devices. Let us Heed the still small voice of God. Listen, we're in a warfare church. We are in a warfare all the way until the end. It's only he that overcomes is going to get a new name in a white stone. And no man knows it's saving he that receives it. But you got to overcome. Overcome what, preacher? you got to overcome the flesh, the world, and the devil. There's three enemies that constantly oppose us. The flesh, the world, and the devil. Overcome. There's a snare 
that's being set up for each of us and it's camouflaged. Let us come quickly around these altars. Come and find a place to kneel. You can stand. You can kneel. Listen to me today. God speak into our hearts. It's a snare. It's a trap. Do not, do not be deceived by the enemy. Yeah.
two verses again that I read at the beginning. Moreover, he must have a good report of them that are without, lest he fall into the reproach and the snare of the devil. And then in 2 Timothy tells us that God is able to get someone out of the snare. Thank God. Thank God. It says, and they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by his him at his will failure is not final am I the only one in my life that's been tricked and trapped and ensnared I ain't the only one we've all been deceived by the enemy we've all been in a place where we said man I've learned my lesson I won't do that again 
But I want to warn you, there are certain things that are so deep when you go a certain direction, it's going to have repercussions and eternal consequences. The blood may cleanse you and you may get to heaven, but the damage in this life is going to be great. I'm warning you against satanic snares. I'm warning somebody in this. I feel so strong in my spirit today. I feel so strong in my spirit today. I know, I don't know who it is or who it is, if there's more than one or two or three or four. It's a word that is applicable for all of us, but there's a warning going out. I don't know, but the Holy Ghost knows and you know. I'm warning you. I'm warning you. I've literally begged people in my office in counseling, please do not go this direction. I've literally begged them and they, they already had their mind made up to go that direction. And the pain and the devastation that followed them, I don't even want to talk about it. I'm warning you to be on guard for satanic snares. Can we stand? If you're praying, keep praying. Heavenly Father, we thank you for what we feel in this place today. I thank you for the Word of God. I thank you, Lord, that it's a lamp to our feet and a light unto our path. I'm asking you, Lord, to drive the Word of God deep within our spirits. Let us have discernment. Let us respond to you in humility and in true repentance. Lord, let us see the traps. We may not even be able to know where they're at, but Lord, you can guide us and direct us and lead us away from every attack of the adversary. Keep us, Lord, in the safety of God's everlasting hands. Lord, I thank you for what you have done, what you're doing, and what you are going to do in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. You are dismissed this morning. Church time tonight at 6 p.m. Come expecting God to move in this house. He's going to help us tonight.